Many years ago, when a sun still spun around the world and magic sprang forth from the living earth, adventurers sought opportunity, riches, and mushrooms. Folks, you gotta believe me, these shrooms were f***ing wild. They make you see square out of one eye and circle out of the other, and then you smear yourself with saga butter and you run naked under the moonlight. Cut! Uh, so what? Uh, I was just getting into my flow here. We're on a tight schedule. No mushrooms, okay? All right. We talked about this. <laughs> so, we got turn-based strategy and tactics, liberally seasoned with roguelike elements. Well, and we got plenty of crunchy combat. We got mechanics like flanking. We got terrain, terrain. We got daylight. We got loot. If you like loot, loot. You better get your inventory in order because we got items coming out of our f***ing nostrils. Legendary weapons, magical charms, fancy hats, medicine. And how to get these things? By exploring this procedurally generated, ever-changing world. Slay monsters, raid tombs, make an offer to the gods, do whatever you can to train and equip your troops, because when a fourth crystal heralds that total eclipse, demons will emerge from the infernal depths to wreak havoc on your village. Defend it at all costs, or everything is lost. Cut! All right, <coughs> that's a wrap, eh? Uh, so, where do I get my paycheck? Uh, I'm out of here. I gotta see a guy about some shrooms. Hello, and thank you for being part of this interview series. Um, first question of all, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Thomas, and I'm the sole developer and uh, guy in uh, the studio Hacking Dragons, um, which is a fresh studio, um, or like quite fresh studio, um, that just got founded at uh, the start of that year. Oh, congrats to the to founding the studio. Um, and of course, we would love to hear now everything about the studio and also a little bit the history. Like, how did you get to the studio and was was the way there? Mm -hmm. So I've been in the games industry for 10 years, around 10 years now, um, working in studios in Germany and in Austria uh, as a game designer. And uh, in the recent like five years or so, I um, also started to yeah basically educate myself about like programming, and um, just because I wanted to also like um, not always only being the guy that basically tells other people to do something, but also um, yeah be a being able to create something myself um, was quite important for me. And in all the studios I worked in, um, we were working with Unity, so I already got a good head start there. Like always working quite hands on. And um, yeah, together with then like the knowledge that I gained through like yeah, evenings of like uh, doing coding tutorials, um, I yeah just made the decision that it's time um, for me to basically uh, create something like on my own. Um, basically, be, being the like the guy that decides all of it, um, or like at least in the start of it. And um, that's why I ended up um, founding Hugging Dragons. Um, studio and um, yeah um, like there was already an, an envision basically for for the game um, I wanted to make and um, so yeah that's that's basically there was a business plan and uh, yeah uh, founding founding the studio and uh, now I'm here like basically developing um, this game since uh, overall probably like uh, good like one and a half one yeah, one and a half and two two years about like it's, it's a little bit um, rough basically where exactly it started like from the idea to actually prototype to um, where i'm right now this game i think this this triggers already the next question so tell us everything about the current game you are working on so the game i'm working on is uh like what i would like to call it is a turn-based tactics adventure um, it's actually influenced by a lot of different genres um, and it's kind of like developed over time. So initially um, my pitch was, um, it's kind of like Wargroof, Spelunky and Rick and Morty had a baby in Fairyland. And this still holds true to a certain extent, um, but it also developed um, further from that um, since, uh, since the initial vision basically. So um, I really wanted to create a game where um, the player can 
go in or the player would walk in basically almost um, not knowing what to expect. Um, of course, apart from the, the rough um, over overarching genre. Um, because I don't like what I don't like about games nowadays um, is that uh, many times you, as the player, basically you walk in and you already know everything. Um, either because you already read about it, um, like for months and years uh, in advance, um, but also because the games are very much like tailored to like basically telling you everything um, up front. At least like when you're looking at, uh, of course, the AAA stuff. Um, in the indie era, in the indie scene or in the indie games, it's it's still quite different. But um, I wanted to go a step further because I wanted to bring back that that kind of like um, experience that I had back then when I was eight years old or so, and like um, got my first computer games and they were in English. I didn't understand English, um, at least not very well at that age, and um, I also didn't have a manual, of course. So I just had to figure out like how does this work, uh, this game work actually. And this is still such a strong like um, experience that I uh, really um, like to think about and uh, that I want to bring, um, like that I want to turn up to 11 basically with the game. So while there's a lot of like um, things that you would expect in a turn-based tactics game, um, there's also a lot of stuff in there that you have to discover yourself. Um, also a lot of roguelike elements that also kind of like go into that direction of like having many like hidden mechanics um, and uh, mechanics you just have to figure out over time. Of course, you can always like if you play the game like uh, a few months or weeks um, after release, like look that stuff up in the internet. But still, um, at least for those initial players or those players that don't look stuff up, I think this experience, that's, that's kind of like the experience that I want to create, going into something and just this is uncharted territory. Um, you need to figure the stuff out, like how to like how to tame a cockatrice. Um, how do you get uh, the witch to do a witch brew for you, right? Um, so all these different kind of things um, that are set in this um, little bit weird fantasy world, um, you have to figure out. And um, yeah, that's basically the, the basic or the, the, the most important aspect, I think, um, for me when developing that game. I think you already had me with naming Rick and Morty as, as part of the wish. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what are the next steps and maybe also like a, if you if you frame it in a bigger, bigger picture um what is like the future vision um for you or for your studio or for what you want to mm -hmm. create so the next steps um basically right now i'm i'm, I'm putting together like um, a solid build basically um, first for like um, finally starting to like go out and test with more people so if anybody's interested please um, let me know um, and also to send that build out to publishers. So I'm, I'm already in talks with uh, different publishers, about 10, and um, they're interested. Um, some of them had uh, also some good ideas or some good like um, wishes where they would like to see or what they would like to see in the game. So that's um, some like that's issues or, or, or things that I'm addressing currently. Um, so um, I'm trying to create really a really good build that's just like that I can send out and give out to basically anybody um, that's remotely interested in, in games uh, so um, and, uh, can play and have fun with. Um, so that took quite some time um, because I still had to learn a lot on the on the journey basically from like starting um, almost two years ago. Um, also with like of course, like rewriting like part of the architecture of the game after like um, yeah learning a lot um, on the way, and um, so yeah that's that's where I'm currently at. Like I'm 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 just at the, at the point where I say okay, like the basic stuff is now done. Like the core elements are implemented into the game. Um, I have the tools there that I need to create the content, and um, now I'm basically starting to really put all these things together. Like, put a little bit more content in, polish the content that's already there, all that kind of stuff to make it like a whole, uh, a really good, like uh, well-rounded um, um, game to play. Um, so that's basically the next steps, like sending out um, the game to, um, to testers um, and sending out the game to publishers because I would really like to like work with a publisher. Um, there's still the, the option of, of, of doing other, like um, basically, financing um, 
yeah, finance in, uh, in, in any other uh, way. But uh, I think like after two years of developing and basically filling all the different positions except for um, the art, like I have a really good um, artist that I'm working with, um, like filling all those positions, I'm really like longing for finally again, like uh, giving uh, giving away some of the responsibilities. Um, so I'm looking for a strong partner here, um, which, yeah, um, probably should be a publisher or hopefully will be a publisher. Um, in regards to the studio, um, so basically what I want to create is uh, is a small indie studio where yeah, basically everybody knows each other and um, where games are being created that are not like your typical like run of the mill games. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like, um, you know, like some people, they really like to basically before they start production, they really would like to know like where the end result, like the game, the final game, where it will end up. Um, and that's what I've seen like um, time and time again, like um, while working um, all these 10 years. And I feel that's, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's a little bit boring for me as a as a developer. Like, of course, on the one hand, it's kind of like secure because you know, like, okay, I want to exactly make that game or or quite exactly make that game, and these are the things that I need up, need for it. But um, apart from the iteration that you need on the way anyway, um, because it's a game, you know, like you you're never going to know like exactly what you want, like what there will be at the end, and what you need to do, like what you need to tweak from your original vision. But I even want to go a step further because I think games can really benefit from um, basically growing, maybe not growing so much because that's like, um, yeah, you need to try to keep the scope like in, in, in some, some place basically that you can still manage, but that can grow into different areas in, or in different ways in terms of like um, gameplay and in terms of, um, yeah, just uh, they need to basically find themselves, you know, it's kind of like, kind of like children, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's of course like different opinions on that, um, and different ways may, uh, games get made, but that's kind of like how I would like to, um, also, um, um, do game development, uh, development in the future, um, with that studio. And, um, hopefully there will be another title, um, after this one. Um, and yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm quite sure that there will be another title because I really enjoy working like that. Um. Even though, like, there's, like I said, like many um, hats that I have to wear right now, um, and I want to give away some of them, uh, I still enjoy that. Basically, being not only responsible for the game design, but also for like programming, but also for UI design and stuff like that. So I really enjoy basically um, uh, also like uh, doing different things. And um, basically, I'm I'm looking for people um, like in the near future. Uh, I mean. If the right people come along, even right now, that uh, would like to join me on that journey and uh, basically have like different, uh, uh, not different, but the same opinion um, about like what games should be, what games they would re really like to make, and um, yeah, so that's um, that's basically my my vision on how I want to like slowly, uh, hopefully, grow that studio into like a, a, a two per, like to a two person team to a three person team and, and something like below 10 uh, mm. in the next like yeah cool. longer future basically yeah so that would be the vision for it yeah thanks so much for sharing that it's super exciting and lots of fingers crossed for the current title and for the next title i'm very excited our next question would be what advices would you give young developers or developers who want to start their own studio maybe or um who are like really young in this industry so it's, I think it's really like, it's a, that's a tough question because it's like, I think everybody has to find um, his or her own way. Um, but um, what would be the most important things? Um, I think is, I think the most important thing is um, to find the, like the position you really enjoy into, like in those different, many different um, um, areas uh, that are part of game development. Um, I would still focus on that um, while still like learning about all the other things. And I think the most important aspect I would really say is like um, connect and get together with other people, do something like, um, yeah, together with other people. Um, 
because I like, you know, like right now I'm a one person team. So that's like basically the opposite of what I'm currently doing. But um, I really enjoy like working together with other people and basically getting like that, like together, you always like get this different um, view angle on your creative product. And um, that really helps, I think. And, and, and uh, games like almost always being a team effort. I think that's the most like, that's the most important skill you really um, have to develop basically how to like work together with other people, how to work together with other disciplines. Um, so getting other people um, or like getting some people together and work with other people, I think that should really be um, something I, yeah, or that I would suggest to, to um, pursue um, when starting out. Um, apart from that, it's, it's really difficult because you can come from like, still come from many different, um, you know, like, angles into game development um while we have um uh, universities and and, uh, studies and the schools that that already like teach like game development game design stuff like that in a very like specialized manner um there's so many different angles you can come from you know like uh, there's like yeah from from all different kinds of studies or non-studies basically people that i've worked with together and um in so many great people that I've worked with together that uh, did not have like uh, this kind of like education that's available today. So I wouldn't like really focus on something like that, but more like um, really finding finding something that you really enjoy out of that um, game development and um, basically then um, like focus on that, um, get, get really into deep into that. Um, while not forgetting all the other disciplines so we can really work together with other people. I think that's, that's important. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. So the last question would be very specialized for this year. <laughs> I mean, 2020 mm-hmm. has been a very, very unique year in, in many matters. How was the year for you? How did you cope with that? And um, did you learn something which you would do differently in the future? And what are you most looking forward to when things are a little bit more normal again? So, hmm, I mean, 2020 for me was really um, actually not that much that much different, um, to be honest, uh, in terms of my work. Um, because like I don't have any games out there. I'm still developing a game, so I don't even have any, you know, like, um, oh, people are now playing more or um, something like that because of uh, that pandemic that's still out there. Um, so in terms of the work environment, nothing really changed for me too much. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, like overall 2020 was a very exhausting year, um, I have to admit. Like uh, like there was much work to do um, to, to get the game where it is right now. And... Um, like one of the learnings out of that basically is that I need like to basically find other people to um, help me out and uh, basically bring that game um, into its final vision. Um, so yeah, that was that was the learning. Um, but really, apart from all the like personal issues we are dealing with, with not being able to see our loved ones and our friends, um, or at least not as frequent as we are used to. Um, like apart from that, uh, like in work terms, nothing really has changed too much. Um, so I'm not sure like I can really give a good insight on that, um, in that regard. Thomas, thank you so much for this interview and for this really inspiring um, takes on many things. And yeah, good luck for, for releasing your game and looking forward to play it um, hopefully soon. <laughs> thank you for having me. And yeah, I also hope to um, like yeah, get the game into the hands of, of players out there very soon. Cool. Bye. Bye.